Welcome back. Today we got a new patient, or a new old patient. Uh, when I bought my surface grinder, this uh, face converter was with it, uh, but it doesn't look very convincing. So we took the cover off, and uh, it's an old style capacitor grave. Unfortunately, it doesn't look very healthy. That capacitor here has lost its fluid. Uh, so that needs looking at. Uh, it's a 400 microfarad, uh, sorry, it's 47 microfarad, 450 volts. It's got a birthday, which is 6th of October 1989, made by RK, whoever that is. We've got a few other issues. The cable is, uh, yeah, it needs replacing. I can't sell it this way. Um, we'll fix it. Well, we change the capacitor, check. The other capacitors is one has been replaced at some point uh, we'll look at the other ones as well and then we'll test it and uh, probably sell it on because we don't need it uh, it's a four horsepower 230 volt inputs and uh, 400 volt output it's a nice piece of kit uh, they're quite expensive usually it's a bit of a different design to my other one um, if you haven't seen it, watch my video of fixing the other phase converter where there was a component faulty. Uh, this works a bit differently. It's got that current sensing coil here. Uh, it, it, it's essentially it's the same principle. It's just older technology, but uh, should work fine so far. So we'll we'll see what we have in stock and uh, we'll replace the capacitor and give it a try. Oh, obviously the cable as well. Uh, got a few issues. This capacitor is blown. It's bulged. So I think it lost its electrolyte. Here is a new one. Same same value. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the development since uh, 1989. We got that cable is broken here. Uh, yeah, it's already set to 400 volts. Uh, yeah, let's change that capacitor and uh, put a cable on, put a, put a plug on. And uh, this is an old style one, no electronics so far. This is a current sensing coil, it just flicks a switch here. So actually when you pull the inrush current it puts extra capacitors and then it releases it. It's got a switch on the side, ah, it's got a switch on the side. Um, which sets the different values and on the left hand and the, the racer start switch as well which pulls in the contactor and the extra capacitors um, pretty much the same as the transwave just a bit of an older design with the current sensing wire a simple coil uh, the current goes through and that just pulls the plunger um, can't be much wrong, but we need to fix that capacitor because it looks like it's it's blown out. Right, let's take that off and uh, put a new one on, and then we'll see what we get. And here you can see it's pretty blown, it's pretty bulged, so it has it. Let's put some notes on here. Make a plus mark here. So we know there's a rectifier down here, which does that. So let me solder on these wires and we'll come back. Um, it looks really small for that size, but whatever. That's what it is. Alright. 47 microfarad, 450 volts. 47 microfarad, 450 volts. Most likely made in China. Okay, so we fitted a new capacitor, it doesn't hold with the wires, and I didn't like that actually because the bare wires were very close to the case here. So we just put some wires on, left the cable ties a bit longer, so it pushes it down just in case. Uh, but it's, there's enough clearance, about one centimeter. Um, 
yeah, we need to dress the cable here because this is uh, not safe. Um, and then test it. Put a plug on. Put a socket on. Uh, yeah, let's fix that wire. Put a main slate on, and then we'll give it a try. So we make that hole a little bit bigger so we can proper put a proper gland in here because this uh, rubber grommet is no good. Um, so I'm going to stick her off here. I guess that doesn't look right if the sticker is... It's now 400 volts, not 415 anymore. So we give that a bit of a clean and uh, we put a gland in and the cable fitted. We're going to give it a clean when we're finished. But I just want to clean the area where, where the cable goes in. So we just need to rewire the whole thing. Uh, I cut them off because it's all soldered here so we put some uh, connection block in here and the other one goes here and obviously the ground goes in the case so make that long enough and then just tighten the gland job done okay all right let's rewire that that's the old rubber grommet. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a joke, is it? Yeah, we had to make the hole bigger, but uh, it's worth it. But I don't like these grommets. So it's, it's just not a proper strain relief. Okay, let me wire that up. Uh, obviously, that goes here, and the blue goes here, and the black goes here to the other black, and the ground goes here. Uh, we may take a bit more of the... Alright, uh, let me wire that and uh, we'll come back. So we got everything wired up. Uh, put a plug on, it hums, it works. Uh, it needs a minimum load, otherwise the... the uh Can you hear that? So the contactor kicks in if there is a significant current going through and uh, if you get not enough load you got that start button which does exactly the same. Um, it needs about one horsepower, one and a half horsepower otherwise it's not going to start. Automatically you need to push the button. Um, I tried it with the mill, the mill has just not enough inertia but with a lady it works so let me set up the camera and uh, I'll fire it up and you can actually watch this thing moving here so I'm gonna fire up the lathe hope that was visible why is it too bright So let's try it again, just in case it wasn't visible. Hopefully that was visible. Anyway, that concludes this one. Uh, yeah, we need to close the plug and things like that, but uh, it's working. Got a switch here for different powers. What it does, it just sets different capacitors. You've got these three capacitors on the right hand side, and uh, this switch is just setting a bunch of capacitors. This is the start switch, switch for low power. I think if you're in the half horsepower range, it's not going to come in with that automatic um, start capacitor. I think it's switching the two top ones. That's what it looks like, which are the ones for starting, the other ones are for running. Okay, um, that it does exactly what a transwave is doing, it's uh, just that coil is replaced in a transwave with, with a voltage sensing unit. Um, 
we repaired that recently on mine. I made a video about the repair on mine. Uh, put a link in the description. The position of this coil in relation to the switch is critical. Um, and the unit must be upright, otherwise the weight of the plunger is not pushing on the thing and uh, it needs even more in, in uh, it needs even more inverse current to, to move it so that's the reason why I put some cable ties on just to make sure it's not moving uh, yeah we put some I need another cable tie here we put a connector here so if someone wants to change the cable it's easy uh, before it was all soldered in uh, yeah we put our capacitor here set it to 400 volts uh, Put a gland in here, that's the main switch. Uh, fitted the plug, main plug and the auto plug seems to be turning in the right direction, so we're good to go. Uh, these resistors are discharge resistors, so if the unit is turned off, it, it's discharging the capacitors to make sure uh, if you open it and touch something, you're not going to get it uh, electrocuted because. These capacitors can hold a considerable amount of energy, and if you touch it, you get a 400 volt shock. Um, that's not funny. Well, that's it for this one. Not much more to say. It's working. And uh, we give it a bit of a clean and find someone who's going to use it. Because I can't. I don't need it. Anyway, that's it from this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.